Rock on, good folks at home. It's Tuesday night. It's the locker room. It's the Blakester on board. Big show tonight. Much sadness. We have a dead pussy in the house. More about that later. We'll see you after the break. Special guest. It's all happening. Locker room, Tuesday night. Whoa. Boom. <laughs> And welcome back to the locker room, good folks at home. It's Greg Blake on deck. It's a Tuesday night. It is the locker room. It's Channel 31. Thanks to all our, spo- all our sponsors. We're really looking forward to tonight's show, despite the bereavement in the locker room family. More about that later. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to let a dead pussy sully the show because we've got a very special guest. And we've also got the big man, Dougie Hodgson, DH. Good to see you, Mr. Blake. Like freaking Benjamin Button after that. Uh, look, look at him. He's resplendent in his Victoria top and he's looking beautiful. It's good to see you. But you know what's it? You know the person that's even better to see? And before I'm even introducing him, because you're sitting there going, I know Dean Hennessy already. I know Dean Hennessy. He's like a homeboy to us. He's been around Victoria soccer for around about 30 odd years. Uh, and his dad as well. Dino, welcome to the show. Mean Dean Hennessy. Thanks, Blakey. Good to see you again. And you to you, Dougie. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, it's to good to you. see you too. You're looking Thanks handsome and wonderful. Me. It's actually, you know, what we're about here is contemporary, making uh, the old game contemporary, as well as talking about the game as it is yeah. now. And you've got a lovely perspective because you've got this lovely, rich history in Victorian soccer. Take us through the journey, Mean Dean. From the start, and do it really quickly because we're only a couple of minutes. Okay, I mean, I came to Australia in 1983. Good year, we won the America's Cup. We did, and I've actually got a little story about that one. Uh, but arrived here, 17, raw, white as a ghost, skinny, and uh, I was uh, coming from what they call the Tulsa Roughnecks to what they call the Albion Brassnecks. And that was the <laughs> article that Craig McKenzie wrote. And I was, it was really, really good baptism, baptism of fire. I got to meet loads of people who are still dear friends to me, even to this day. And what a great journey. It began in 83, and I'm up until this year I was coaching. So I've really effectively been involved in each and every year for 30 years. And, and I was just going to say, that what was really lovely about speaking to you before the show was hearing you talk about, and again, because I'm old and I have the privilege <laughs> of forgetting crap, I forget stuff all the time. Where am I? Anyway, uh, I get to forget stuff all the time, and it was lovely because every time we get a guest on the show and you talk about the people that you've met al- across the journey, and I think, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Just, you know, rough draft, but over, who are the most memorable characters and why that you've come across in Victorian soccer? Well, most probably the best one to start with is obviously someone close to us on the left. And uh, Chris Taylor, obviously, is a, a coach that's very well known in Victorian circles, um, won it all last year and also has a big chance of maybe even winning it again this year with South Melbourne. But uh, he and I were playing together at Thomastown, and there was a young Dougie Hodgson, and they were, he was playing for Frankston at the time, 4-0 down, about 15 to go, and uh, they make the substitution, so he comes bowling on, as he used to, came running into me, barged into me, gave me a bit of a slap, then gave Chris a slap and said, do you know who I am? I said, no, who are you? Goes, I'm Dougie Hodgson. And he goes, um, I'm a kickboxer. And uh, Chris Taylor said, well, do you mean a kickboxer? He said, who's that? And he said, oh, I'll tell you, the coach is, you know, the one who's taught me. It was a guy called Hedgecock. And he goes, well, is his name Alfred? He goes, no, no, his name's not Alfred. Obviously, Alfred Hedgecock. So that was Dougie's introduction to me playing against and him. And you now know why I've ended up the way I am. That that CT and Dino just battered me from one end of the park to the other. Yeah, they're not not ill deserved. We um, are at the Springthorpe. Sorry, Dougie, I just want to mention we're at the Springthorpe Country Club, and I don't know about you two, but uh, we are resplendent in the in the richness of middle class fraud uh, as we speak. Um, <laughs> sorry, social commentary. Um, <laughs> the thing was, they, the thing, the great you go about, you played mate three hundred games. In the Premier League, yeah. in the coaching design? Most probably when we had it up, I played about 250 league games in the Premier League from between 83 to 95. Yeah. And then I had a little stint, obviously, I was coming towards the end of it in the first division. And my last, very last year was at Essendon as a player coach. And then that was my, you know, my career finish in 98. And played 300 games and coached over 300 games in the leagues of the Victorian leagues at the yeah. present. Yeah, coached um, mainly in the Premier League, first division and second division. Um, and it's been a great, uh, great journey in the sense of not only coached and played, but the the thing that always makes most probably you think more than, more so than anything is you end up coaching 
boys who actually played against their dads. You know, and like David Sturton, for instance, is a, a young lad that I brought in at Southern Stars last year. Ian Sturton. And I used to get, play against Sturton yeah, my first yeah. year in 83. Yeah. But, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And that's when you know you're getting old. The good thing is, you at least you go to see, you can reminisce with the old man, have a few stubbies after the game as well as you're talking well, about Well, that's football. good, exactly. And you most probably got more in common nowadays with the old guys than you do with the young ones. But... And, and spe speaking of the old ones, because your old man came out as well to Australia, and you remind me he came out after you, but I remember Terry very, very well. And he came out a couple of years after, and he was uh, the first coach of the Melbourne Knights, Melbourne Croatia, yeah, when they correct. joined the NSL. Well, what happened when I came in 83, that year, they promoted four teams, which that's was Melbourne Croatia, Green Gully, Sunshine George Cross, and Juventus. Yep. And they decided, like most clubs do, they changed the coach, they yep. got into a new league. And through a good friend of all of us that we most, well, get, I know you certainly know, Gary Cutler, he, uh, he was working for The Age at the time, and um, he got my dad involved with, Southern, uh, sorry, with uh, Melbourne Croatia, Joe Segur was the president, before we know it, the first, very first year of the National League for Mount Croatia, my dad was the coach. So that got him here in 1984. He'd just come off the back of winning the North American Soccer League with the Tulsa Roughnecks and an, an unbelievable job he did with the lowest and, and, you, and your dad's still travelling well? Does really good, 71 now, but he's retired for about two, three, three years now, but he's living down in Mornington. Like he let's just say, when I took him to the height of the reunion a couple of years ago, he went home on his own, but he was looking okay <laughs> halfway through, and in the end of the night, he was doing quite well. Yeah, he's doing but, right. um, Dino, you know, we talk about how you got here, like we talked about your mate, you, as a kid, yep. had trials at Man U. Yep. Now, a lot of people wouldn't know, a lot of people know as a player here, obviously you had bad injuries, we'll get to that in a minute, but Man U, Knox County, Derby, Forest, obviously Man U, talk me through them little... Them I was days. very fortunate. I, I was brought up in an environment where obviously it was a football family. Yep. Um, most probably as a 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old, one of the better players in the particular town I was from, which was Nottingham. Had my first trial as a nine-year-old with Nigel Clough um, when Brian was the manager. Lucky to do me um, one of my UEFA for badge with Cloughy. Yeah, yeah, Nigel, um, yeah, no, Nigel grew up with Nigel. Um, most Brian probably the claim to fame was when we had trials at Man United. Boy, Gordon Miller and I went to... Man United and I was a striker then and I'm popping goals in and there was this cheeky Irish boy saying look you know tomorrow give me the ball I'll sort it out I said don't worry I'll sort it out tomorrow got there the next day first day of the trial this kid's banging them in goal after goal I'm hitting the target on the odd occasion works out it's Norman Whiteside you know and five years later he's the youngest player see what, what, what we've got to do is mention to the youngins at home that these are really really big names that we're talking about don't don't be denied we're going to take a short break here on Dead Pussy Night on the, uh, the Locker Room. We'll contextualise that for you a little later, but you know you've made it big when the Locker Room's got security. We've got Webby here. Uh, we've had a, a, an absolute uh, deluge of fans trying to knock the door down here at the Springthorpe Country Club. But we've got Webby on the door doing this crap and looking down at him, which is, get out of here. That's the way. Webby, out. Get him out. We'll be back on the Locker Room in just a minute. Dead Pussy Night. assembled for both teams and they're coached by Billy Wojtek in the 94-95 team and for the 95-96 team Ian Dodson and the bulk of the players I tell you what certainly look at their work Ante Kovacevic having a pass there still looking at a million dollars technical director of Perth Glory Silic is forced wide by Savinsky Cuts it in, a chance here for Zilic to finish, and what about that? Wilson Kazisovic. And Genesevic coming out with a save to the nice Zilic. That was great play. And now it's the 94-95 team surging forward again. Biskic. Who's is so much talent. He can finish this, Biskic, but the flag is up. The flag is up. <laughs> the boos from the crowd show you the linesman too. Simon Samadzic and Mate Grigic. Right here to Razov. Kruni Razov in charge of the St. Auburn Saints. And the flick there from Spateri. 
Horvath. Biskic. Been mega impressed with him. His touch, his running. And here he is again. Look at the pace on him. Biskic, if he score this. And he wasn't far off the mark. Just a touch too heavy on that ball. And a chance here. On the Yaka cross, and it's hit at home. By Bakach. Here's the first. It's the 95 96 team. And it's like they're reliving the glory days here at Knight Stadium. A few flares have gone off. And now, the 94 95 team looking to equalise. And they do. And it's that man, Josip Biskic. He's been involved in everything for the 94-95 team. And he's been rewarded with a goal. Markovsky. Cutting it in. A chance here for the 95-96 team to make it two. And they eventually will. Bully Basic thought he did enough to charge it down. And not to be. It's goal number two. For the 95-96 team. It's the first goal of the second half. Dimitris with another run to a great ball into space. Dimitris is Silic. Unselfishly across the face of goal. Biskic nearly had his second and the shot. What about that? Joe Spateri. And what the good old days. Points to the outer. Signals a goal. And Joe Spateri pegs the 94-95 team back on square terms. It's 2-2. And on that note, this game comes to a close and it finishes at two goals apiece between the 94-95 team and the 95-96 championship teams for the Melbourne Knights and for the 94-95 squad. Josip Biskic and Joe Spateri to score. Welcome back to the locker room, good folks at home. It's dead pussy night. I could be sadder, and in, on the inside, I'm crying. Don't forget the wonderful, wonderful Locker Room Facebook page if you want to take a sauntering, meandering journey through history of soccer, and also contemporary issues and lots of abuse and rude words. If I understood how to use Facebook, I certainly would respond to some of the things that I've seen on there. I've got to thank two people. One is the Port Wog Boy, whose uh, Facebook posts are incredible. Port Wog Boy, love your work. And also Fred Soliris. Now, Freddie, if you're watching this, take off your tutu, go to your room and get some dignity back, would you? Dean Hennessy is our very, very special guest. And uh, our co-captain on the good ship um, locker room is <laughs> Doug... <laughs> Dougie, I'm here, Doug, I made it. I know. It's, I think we're all a bit hysterical. I've lost six chins. And the pussy has passed. On you is, we'll, we'll get back to the pussy later we on. Will. It's been a very sad night. Mate. But on a good night, though, Dino, 17 year old, mate. We're talking about kids coming through the age. Yeah. Now, 17, you played 25 games for Albion Rovers, in 20, 25 out of 26 as a 17 year old. Who were alongside people that were in that team then, mate? Well, again, it was. Um, I came there as, as a defender and I'd really not played that much at the back um, up until I actually arrived in Australia. And, um, there was a guy there, Frank McLeod. Remember Donnie McLeod, Alex Heidelberg? Well, his yeah. older brother was St. Arthur. was a, a real hard man who really sorted me out in training to make sure I understood the game uh, in Jerry Riley. Uh, we had a boy called Peter Dixon up front who played in Scotland. And we had people, you know, young, some, some of the young lads coming into the team, but it was a tough, real tough... Um, I suppose first season for me in the sense of playing on some really good sides. Obviously, four of those sides went into the National League the next year, of which a lot of those players played in that National League. Big stepping stone. So it was look great experience, you know, um, playing in front of. I remember my debut against Melbourne Croatia, three and a half thousand there, three thousand two hundred and fifty were Croatians and two fifty Albion Rovers. But it was uh, just a great experience. Mate, we know Paul, he's been the assistant at some of the, one of your club, old Harold there. Yeah, Harold, now, yeah. The Rothrams, Blake, he was remember the hot Rothrams night, he was there too. He picked you. Backward he smoking was popular and encouraged. <laughs> and that was when, three points, you were winning. Talk me through that year, the Rothrams, you got pipped at the post by three points. Well, now called the gold medal, but in those days it was the Rothmans where, you know, the smoking you could actually advertise. And uh, and you could actually smoke at the dinner. Actually, which was... Yeah, you could. <laughs> and it was a big night at the Southern Cross. So. <laughs> And in those days, they picked the ones and two votes. So you walked into the room with all the twos and ones there, and there was a leaderboard. 
and um, there was some outside betting, which obviously, you know, being ex Southern stars, I might have to be a bit careful <laughs> with that. Well, that so, uh, <laughs> but, but there was some betting going on of who might be favourite. Anyway, I walked in the room, I'm there leading on 19 votes with the twos and ones. And I remember Gary Cole walking up to me, he was in a white tuxedo, and he's just gone, Dina, no one's ever lost it from here. <laughs> nine points clear. Uh, but my mate Harold, or obviously people know him as Paul Harris, yeah. he, um, he ended up getting nine best on rounds, you know, and obviously the, the season. And he picked me in the very last round, me and Effie Kassar, who played at Morwell. And to be fair, as much as you're bitterly disappointed because you're that close, yeah. he was superb that yeah, year. Yeah. And he so thoroughly deserved, deserved absolutely. Deserved. Deserved. That night we celebrated together and it was good. So people don't know, but you played Jimmy Rooney. You actually played with some great players. Jimmy Rooney, yeah. some Strain, Laney, Smith, Javenis. You played at Albion, Box Hill, Faulkner, Thomas Dancourt and Donny. 300 games. Who's one of the best you played with, mate? I think the most one of the hardest opponents, most probably my best mate, and that's Steve Smith. Um, he, he was quality. He could, you know, he just uh, give him half a chance. He'd score goals. Yeah. But different strikers played Charlie Egan, uh, Dougie Hodgson. Both, you know, they all cause you different problems. Mainly the ones because I was a centre half. The, the, the ones that you always were dealing with was yeah, the strikers. Exactly. One of the most physical and hard to play um, was. Uh, well, I'm trying to think now. The, Frenchie was really good. Brogues, David yeah, Brogan. Brogan yeah. you know, and again, most of these lads went on to play in the National League and they were a handful. So and now, again, just going back to that Facebook page and talking about what I'll tell you, good folks at home, what sucks is that you guys don't get to hear a lot of the stories that get told on, on the locker room behind the scenes. And, and, and I love listening to people like Dean Hennessy. That's Dean Hennessy, by the way. You can tell by the handsome, good look, boyish good looks. Uh, Webby, you still there? Good. <laughs> yep, Webby, still there, keeping out the fans. Um, and even on Dead Pussy Night, I get excited. I get intoxicated by hearing all these old names. And Dougie touched on it, who's your hardest opponent. Off the top of your head, two best players that you saw, that you've seen over that period, and perhaps the, the most influential coach that you worked under. Oh, I, would, I would definitely say, if you look at the players I played against, Zarko Ajakov, yep. who ended up playing for Australia, ex yep. Preston. Yep. Oscar Crino was a handful oh. in midfield. Yep. I mean, you know, South American, but it was hard as nails. Yep. And so was Zaki as well, you know. The jack off was very, very good. So there, look, there was, in those days, it, you were you were spoilt by choice. There was lots and lots of good players that most probably never got the credit they deserved. Yep. Um, best coach, look, most probably the most influential coach was my Box Hill coach, which was when Billy Murray left and went to Preston. Uh, Keith Webster took over, and he made me believe as an 18-year-old that Keith I was the best. Webster, remember God, Webby? Yes. He actually made me believe I was better than I was, and you know it's like Doug's had a lot of coaches like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and, and we'll talk about Dougie. If you talk about influential as a young lad coming in the system, he played a year and I think finished second in the Rothmans, and he was in a team that got relegated, and he was unbelievable. We beat them five or six nil one day, and he was everywhere. And it was like they had ten or eleven of the same bloke on. Then we thought this kid's got a chance. And to his credit, he not only went in and did it in the national league, but then. Had a really good career overseas. So, so I'm not sensing a vein of man love happening here. A little here. bit of man love there, don't you? <laughs> 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 okay. And look, so. that's what you need. When a pussy dies, you need to regenerate the energy. You need to put your arms around each other and encourage and love and care. And, and, and on Dead Pussy Night here on the locker room, that's what we're seeing right now, a beautiful moment between our special guest Dean Hennessy and Dougie Hodgson. Unfortunately, time is a Guinness. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back more uh, a little bit later and more later. We'll have more later. That's where I was going, good folks at home. I'm just distraught because it is Dead Pussy Night. See you in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to the locker room, good folks at home. We're laughing on the outside, we're crying on the inside. You know, when a pussy passes and a pussy past is not a pussy of the future. Don't know what I'm doing, but we've got Jay Fott on the team joining our special guest, Dean Hennessy, and Dougie Hodgson, and a big discussion to come. So, Dean, I got the sack, mate, at Bentley. Never seen that before. From there, mate, you've gone over to Southern Stars. Well, they got relegated that same year, so Bentley went up, Southern Stars went down. Got back from the overseas trip and they said, uh, would you come back? New president, because I'd been there in 2008. And we went back to back. We got promoted, getting unbeaten in the 2010 season. Uh, got promoted in the very last kick of the season in uh, 2011. Ten seconds to go, we scored to get promoted. Would, that, would you take that as one of the highlights out of the whole six of them? I think so. Look, I mean, every promotion's great, but when 
You concede with a minute to go, which then all of a sudden it's in your hands and now it's out of your hands. But then to 50 seconds later to get a goal with basically the last kick, it was unbelievable. So that'll always go down as a very fond memory. Which is brilliant. Now, Jay, Johnny, we're talking about Melbourne coming together, mate. Mate, it was a great start to the A-League season with the Melbourne Derby, of course. And, of course, this coming week we've got the VPL Grand Final. Why couldn't... And this is just let me throw it out to you, boys, now. As a Melbourne that's meant to be, and we are, say, in the sports capital of Australia, yeah. why couldn't the game go on before the heart and victory and played as a curtain rate of 40,000 people? How good that have been to bring in the A-League and the um, Victorian Premier League together? Oh, a look, sensational I th- time. I think if you look back, and I think we touched on this on the way to the studio, is that... You look at the relationship that the National League had with the Premier League or the State League, as we called it in those days, and the camaraderie and everyone knew each other. It's miles apart now. To be fair, you know, the A-League is in a different space than where the VPL is. And that would be a great idea for Victoria, for the game in Victoria, to have 40,000, 50,000 at a final. And then the big one, you know, which is starting the A-League, it would be and a great idea. And as we've got the... As you, John, I know you've probably mentioned that we have got rift at the moment because there's oh, court there's cases a lot, there's going, a lot there, going on in the um, VPL at the moment, as we said. Of course, we, we touched on it with the, uh, the betting scandal uh, at Southern Stars and that's still to be played out in the... Got some in the, tips um, this week, in the, boys. Yeah, in the courts. Look, Dougie, that's a serious situation because... It, Apparently, it's not just in the VPL. It, it may pervade other sports. So it's you're just wondering work. where we're all heading with the integrity of these codes. But uh, I can update people with the NPL situation. Um, of course, last Monday, there was a magistrate's court ruling um, in the Victorian magistrate's courts. And the FFV have now been restrained from announcing any clubs or teams or any other consortia that uh, will, will comprise the uh, NPLV in 2014 and beyond. So they, they've been basically told that you can't announce any clubs or entities that will take part. They're going to stop them from taking any further steps towards establishing that MPLV as it currently stands for 2014 and beyond. And the, the, courts, uh, the court will move the um, proceedings up to the Supreme Court. So it's still to be argued out. The clubs are seeing this as a bit of a win because there's 60-plus clubs that have signed up against this current model that the FFV uh, are proposing. Dino's, you were involved last year, obviously, at the moment, without being too rude, is looking for a job. So any <laughs> of you um, coaches, your clubs out there, get your hand in there, give Dino a ring, we'll send his CV out to there's no drum roll. And there is recommendations from six promotions. But, mate, geez, can you? what's your feel towards what they're trying to proceed in, in that aspect? We met last year, um, and there was all the clubs, not just from the Premier League, it was from the First Division, the Second Division. And... It was really evident that they invited four coaches in, and I was one of them. And I suppose because I was the oldest of the coaches that invited, they asked me to speak first. And really, the only thing I thought I could add was that at that stage, it was all a little bit all over the place. Not everyone was on the same page. And I remember saying the one thing that we have to do is stick together. And the one thing I am pleased about, irrespective of where this ends up, is that the clubs have got together, they have stuck together, because... Apart from looking after your own backyard, it's important we look after each other because without that, we haven't got a competition. Well, it's, I think it's unprecedented in Victorian football that you've got 60-plus clubs that are basically saying, we don't want to be a part of this, and they've just stuck tight. In this yeah, whole I think it's great it's just... from that point of view, and hopefully we can resolve it in a positive way where it takes the game forward. Well, Dougie and I, we've talked about this, Dougie, and we've said that, that the model itself in its you know, pure form, the way they're running it in other states, is not bad. But the way they're doing it now is just taking the game backwards. I tell you what, though, we'll get back to that, Johnny, because I'll tell you what, that's just another subject that can be well, spoken about, guys. So I reckon more guys, to come. More to come, to come from the, um, the locker room, guys, on that subject. So I'm sure right now it is not finished and there's a lot more opinions to come. Welcome back to the locker room, good folks at home. We've got a really special treat with Dean Hennessy, our special guest. We are the music man, we come from down your way and I can play. What can you play? We can play the money man. <laughs> and that, folks, is entertainment. And just before we go tonight, be assured, no pussies were harmed in the making of the locker room. Catch you next week. <laughs>